right. Right, we're off. The timer is ticking. So, a few years ago, legacy fundraising had a little bit of a problem. And that problem was that, oh, was that these slides are in the wrong order. <laughs> uh, was that nobody wanted to talk about it. We, as fundraisers, we try and talk about it. But it was still something that people thought just happened. It wasn't something that you could plan. So why bother talking about it? You know, we'd hear words such as, eh, it's a bonus. It's a windfall. We got saved by a big legacy. And I never understood that. I always thought, well, you know, if this is what we're doing without talking about something, what would happen if we did? But there was also another problem. This. <laughs> <laughs> True story. This is how I was introduced to a major donor by a previous director of fundraising of mine. <laughs> Note to all of you, if this is how you introduce your legacy fundraisers, it makes our job rather difficult. <laughs> and that's a funny thing when it comes to legacy fundraising. You know, it, I've spent over 10 years talking to pledgers, inquirers, donors, supporters about legacy giving, and it's something that they're really open about. But it's often us as fundraisers that are the ones that, that have the problem, you know? It often kind of takes us out of our comfort zone, and that's where the problem is. So the big question at the time was, well, how can we make people comfortable talking about legacy fundraising? Well, NSPCC came up with a solution. And they did so by answering three very simple questions. Number one, why do we want to talk to people about legacies? Well, it's a huge part of the income that all of us generates. And it has a huge amount of impact for all of the work that we do across the world. So surely if we start talking about it, then it's only going to get better. Number two. Well, who are our best talkers? The best talkers in your organization is actually your supporter care team or your membership service team. They talk to more members, supporters, donors, whatever, in a week than you as a professional fundraiser will talk to in a year. And they're really good at it. So they're the perfect people to nudge someone calling in towards having a legacy conversation. And finally, well, how can we make it easy? And that's really what I'm here to talk to you about today. Let me introduce you to NSPCC's legacy mind map. And I will quickly introduce you to Norm and Pasha there in the, set, in the center. Um, Norm represents the first part of that question that we were talking about. Why do we need to talk about it? Well, we need to normalize it, you know? Legacy is, is just another form of fundraising. So surely if people call in and ask, well, how do I support your organization? They should be able to have a legacy conversation along with, well, you could do a bake sale, or you could start a direct debit. You know, it's the same kind of thing. And all of these things on the left-hand side were little triggers that their supporter care team could utilize to start a conversation. And then we have Pasha over there on, on the left. What does she represent? Passion, of course, we're fundraisers. We can only do our job if we're passionate about something. So all of those things around, you know, legacies can create a massive impact. It can have a huge impact long into the future. These are the things that we need to get excited about. And that's what they did. And then going back to that second question about well, who are our best talkers, they worked very carefully with their supporter care team and they analyzed all of the regular conversations that they were having. And they worked this around that. So conversations that were coming in around, hi, I've moved house, I'd like you to change my address details, became, hey, well this is a really good opportunity for you to update your will. Or even, hi, I need to cancel my direct debit, but I don't want to cancel my support, became, well, let's have a conversation about cost-effective fundraising. And one of the most cost-effective forms of fundraising is legacy. And that's kind of the point, guys. You know, We spoke before about they wanted to make it easy. And that's exactly what this is. Every single one of you guys could take this away today, walk back into your office, and start a legacy conversation. And this PCC have generated thousands of inquiries and future legacies from this alone. I've used this in a number of charities, and I now use it on a global level for Amnesty International. So it even translates across languages, you know? So we often talk about the big things in fundraising, you know? The big campaigns, the big impact. But it's often the small thing that can have the biggest impact. And this is a really simple something that all of you could take away today and have a huge impact for the work that you're doing now and long into the future. And that's why I wish I'd thought of that. Thank you.